alpha is less than m plus 1 times x. Good. Then alpha isn't an upper bound for A as, as, as uh, we suggested. Alpha is not an upper bound for A, a contradiction. Okay. So uh, we've, um, we've achieved a contradiction, therefore uh, Nx eventually has to be uh, bigger than Y. Okay, so um, yeah, so I guess Emil had a question earlier, which was, gee, well, doesn't the, doesn't the rational numbers uh, have this property as well? Uh, and the answer is uh, yes. So let's see, what, could you use the same proof? No, why not? There's no requirement for a least upper bound. That's correct uh, for, uh, for uh, the set A. So if you were to show this property, you'd have to show it a, a, different, a different way. Yeah, and so um, you know, if you think about this just a little bit, what did we use this property? We used it by sh in order to show that alpha minus x is not an upper bound, and uh, in this case, whatever x is, um, the, you'd have to make this jump a different way. Okay. Okay. Excellent question. Okay, so this is a, an innocuous statement, but it actually has another consequence, which is worth pointing out and may be a surprise to some of you. And that's the following theorem. If you give me any two real numbers between any x and y in R, let's say x we might as well assume is less than y, I claim there is a rational in between them. There is a q and q such that x is less than q is less than y. Another way we say this is we say q is dense in R. What does that mean? It means, uh, formally it means that if you take any interval, you can always find a rational in that interval. So here, uh, x, if you give me two endpoints, I can always find a rational that's in between any two real numbers, okay? Really? Okay, now why is that? Well, um, let's prove it. It's actually not too hard to show once we've established the Archimedean property. So between, uh, so le let's use this fact. So I'm gonna think about the Archimedean property uh, in its equivalent form, you give me a number, there is a reciprocal that's smaller than that number, that positive number. So um, let's choose n such that 1 over n is less than the distance between y and x. Okay. You can't stop me from doing that, and this is the Archimedean property. Okay, that's where we've, at least one place we've used it. Okay, so um, let me draw a picture, because this may help. Here's y, here's x. Look at their difference. Find a reciprocal who's smaller than that difference. And if you imagine these numbers being really, 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 really close together, this number n might be really, really, really large. Okay? Okay. Now, consider multiples of uh, 1 over n. So start multiplying 1 over n. 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, 4 over n, 5 over n, etc. What do you know about the multiples of 1 over n, also by the Archimedean property? Multiples of anything. They're unbounded. 
okay? Tests, uh, they'll get as large as you like. So um, these are unbounded by the Archimedean property also. I'm doing this argument slightly different than the book, but I think this is probably an easier argument to see. So these are unbounded. Well, what does that mean? Well, if it's unbounded, eventually they're bigger than than, uh, than uh, the number uh, uh, x. Okay. So I'm going to choose the first one, the first multiple, uh, such that m over n is bigger than a, uh, sorry, x. Okay. So I picked the first one that, that just got beyond uh, x. So here the, you, you have a bunch of multiples. And there's the first one that, so this is 1 over n, 2 over n, etc. Eventually the first one that just crosses x. And so now I claim m over n is in fact also smaller than y. That is, that first red point actually has got to live between x and y. It won't also be beyond y. Why is that? If not, then what would we have? We would have the following inequalities. We'd have m minus 1 over n is less than x, agreed, because m over n is bigger than x, and it was the first one to do that. And you'd have m over n bigger than b, uh, y, excuse me. But together, these statements would say that 1 over n, but these two statements imply that 1 over n is, in fact, bigger than b over a, a contradiction. Why is that? Um, so, uh, multiply both sides by, sorry, not by b minus a, y minus x. Sorry, excuse me. I'm just thinking in terms of a's and b's. Multiply this by minus to switch the inequality and add the two inequalities. And you get 1 over n is the difference on one side, and y minus x is the difference on the other. Okay. So between any two rational, uh, irreal numbers, there is a rational number. It, they're dense in the reals. They're everywhere. Okay. You can find them in any small interval, as small as you like. OK, very good. Let's, um, let's conclude by listing some properties of Suprema, which will be very useful to you as you work with them. And they're all rather self-evident. of the suprema, this least upper bound idea. So the first property, which uh, you might want to familiarize yourself with, is if you have an upper bound, I'm going to abbreviate upper bound by UB uh, for some set A, that this is true if and only if what's true about the supremum of A. Good. The supremum is less than or equal to gamma if and only if gamma is an upper bound. That should be evident from the definition. Okay? This is the least upper bound of the set A. This is some upper bound. Okay. Well, what about the following? If suppose you know that gamma, that for all little a in big A, little a is less than or equal to gamma. What does this imply? If you know that for everything in a set, gamma bounds that thing, then what? Then gamma is an upper bound, or in other words,